Hi, I'm B from Next Mechanics. On today's video, we're going to be making a glowing cyberpunk mask made out of cardboard and plastic scraps. So I've been thinking about doing this build for some time now, right? COVID's still a thing, you know, even if we don't talk about it, it's there. And I always get funny looks whenever I wear my mask out. What? I want to be safe. So I figured, hey, if you get to stare at me, let's give you a reason to. Now, you know me, I love robots. I love that sort of sci-fi kind of stuff. So let's try doing something that plays to my strengths. We're going to do a very weathered cyberpunky mask that's my own design so i don't have a strict reference to follow to and the best part is that all of the techniques i've done are super super easy so if you want to follow along and make your own covid mask or some other form of cosplay in this style it's super easy you just need a hot glue gun some scissors and patience to kick things off we need to figure out how we're going to make it fit us now i do have a thumb head that i could use to work off of but it's slightly too small. To fix this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on my COVID mask and then get a sheet of tinfoil, a big sheet of tinfoil, and just wrap it over half of my head. Now, this way, I'm essentially making a bust of myself. If I wanted to make templates out of this, I would cover the entire thing in duct tape as well, little squares of duct tape. But for me, I just need a vague shape to reference, so this is good enough, just a couple of squares just to keep the floppy bits, and we're good to go. This bus is going to be super useful because now we can get my sheet of paper and start roughing out vague sort of mess designs and shapes and we can put it onto me and the bust and work around it. That way I can see what I'm doing without having to be in the mirror all the time, constantly having to fiddle with that. That's just a faff. I did one half of the paper template just to get it vaguely about right. We're trying to make it go over the COVID mess because I can't just not wear a covered mask. The cardboard is not going to be a filtration system. It's not actually going to protect me or anyone. So I need a normal mask underneath. Once I did that, I traced it onto a new sheet of paper and also flipped it. That way I had one full piece that was both sides and was symmetrical. This is something I like to do a lot of my custom builds is that I don't necessarily want to make templates, but I do want it to be fairly symmetrical. So I do this quite often by flipping pieces or cutting them at the same time or folding them in half and then cutting them. It's an easy way of making pieces that are symmetrical without needing to measure it all out at first. So once we've got all that out of the way, it's time to start actually doing it with the cardboard. We're just going to initially trace that base cardboard shape and start tweaking it a little bit. I found that the nose and the chin didn't really want to connect quite nicely. There was a lot of gaps, so I would cut the corners off and glue those together. I'm just using hot glue as it works brilliantly with cardboard. Once the base is sorted, I now need to add some vent holes because I can't breathe through cardboard. So I'm just going to have these two holes on either side so that way I can still have the COVID mask there and breathe. Also, I want this to glow, and the easiest way to make it glow is to just use some cheap LEDs you find from a store, like the ones that I use in my backdrop. These aren't amazing, but they're good enough for a cheap cosplay. The next step is what made up the bulk of the project, and it's the funnest part, which is the kit bashing elements. Basically, me being a crafter, I store lots of random bits of junk. This is like milk caps, random bits of plastic, packaging from the action figures, bits of screws and knobs and wires and circuit boards from electronics that don't work anymore. Just lots of random broken things that realistically are never gonna get fixed or actually used ever again. So why not I just repurpose them? Now your mask would change very differently depending on what you had on hand. So for me, I had caps off of like soda bottles and milk cartons. And since I didn't have an exact design in mind, I would just pick the things that looked kind of right or kind of cool. And then to help sort of blend it together, I would cut up tiny little plates of cardboard and sort of glue those on to sort of embed everything and connect it because we don't want it to look like I just glued a random cap on. It needs to look like it's an integrated vent part or something like that. This is not an exact size by any means. I was literally just using scissors and clippers and going bish bash bosh, eh, it's kind of close. Hot glue, douche bash bosh. Oh yeah, that screw looks nice there. Douche. It's super easy and just a lot of fun. I'm kind of in my element here because kit bashing and this sort of cosplay is like one of my favorite things to do. And I've not got to really do it since like the Forgotten Robot cosplay. So 
this is fun. One thing I wanted to do while I was integrating everything together was making sure I had two elastic bands on either side. I tried at first doing a big strap around the back, but that didn't really work. So in the end, I just used two little loops like a COVID mask and it fit like a glove or a mask. And with all of the pieces hot glued and in place, it was time for the base coat of painting. For this, I just did a spray coat of black enamel. That way, any parts that I miss when I go and paint it later will be black which ends up looking like shading or really good texture. Now this being cyberpunk, I want it to look like metal. So I'm gonna use sponge, the same sponge that I used in my bee drone, and I'm gonna just dip a little bit of that in the silver paint I've got and just start sponging that on. All the little bits that the sponge misses is gonna just add to the texture and make it look so much more weathered and realistic. But silver is not enough on its own. So once that was dry, I used white over the top of it, going even more sporadic. That just sort of brightens the silver and keeps the metallic flecks underneath. The more you layer, the better it's gonna look, but you don't wanna do too much or you'll start getting rid of all the black you've got underneath and it loses the effect. And don't worry if the sponge can't quite reach all those gaps, because like I said, it looks like shading. One thing to note is that I actually had used washi tape as like a masking tape over the LEDs, because even though I do wanna gunk them up later on, I don't really want them sponged silver. Next, I just used some bronze and started highlighting certain details, dry brushing the edges a little bit. Then I would also dry brush some white on the tips as well to sort of emphasize the plates. Dry brushing is where you get most of the paint off your brush, so only little tiny bits get on and it really helps it look realistic. Eventually, I started doing some of the tiny, tiny details like the wires, doing them red and blue. And then it was time to take off the masking tape. And these look pristine because they've not had any paint on them. And that looks kind of weird. The rest of the suit's like all damaged. Why wouldn't those bits be? So to fix that, I just used some tiny bit of black paint, kind of smeared it on, and then just used the sleeve of my painting jacket to just get rid of some of it. The LEDs are encased in this sort of plasticky stuff, so it rubs off quite easily. And then for the circuit board bits, I just used a dry brush after I'd done it with the paint to sort of smear bits of it off. You don't want to go too hard on the weathering, otherwise it's just going to look bad. Finally, I did tiny little details of brown here or there just to get some grime in it, and I also dry brushed black onto the tubes just so they look weathered too. So finally, after all of that crafting, scratch building, and painting, it's time to take a look at my cyberpunk mask. Doesn't this look super cool? I even love the fact that I can make it glow. It even has a party mode. So yeah, that looks awesome. And for those wondering, it only took me two days. I highly recommend if you wanna get into cosplay to do something like this because it's fun and basic and it looks really cool. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and my adventure into the cyberpunk aesthetic. I'm so happy that I've got to do more cosplay again. The last time I did one, 
I think was my Forgotten Robot cosplay, and I really want to ramp up to eventually doing my Batman cosplay. So doing little things like this to sort of gear up for a full suit is going to be a good way of doing it. Otherwise, I hope you come back next weekend. The Transformers side of this channel is getting a uh, rather big video. Hope I see you then. Farewell!